Welcome everyone to worship here at Mount Calvary Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Beechler, and as you can see from the purple, we are entering the season of Lent. And today, as we enter the season of Lent, we're going to be focused upon the idea of humility, how God humbled himself for us, and how we are to humble ourselves in service to others. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you for the special season of looking at our souls, of seeing how you want us to grow in our Christian faith. Bless us in this time of worship. In your name we pray, amen. Finish. 
begin this service in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God calls us to humble ourselves in confession before him, and so that is what we do at this time. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, asking him in the name of Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my sins to the Lord, and you will forgive the guilt of my iniquity. We take a moment of silent confession. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, and we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy upon us and forgive us. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God to all of you, and in this stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, forgive you your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As humble servants of God, we now greet one another with the peace of the Lord.
Near the end of his earthly life, Jesus traveled to Jerusalem with his disciples. Each day, he taught in the temple. It was just before the celebration of the Passover, and although many people loved Jesus and his teachings, the religious leaders had conspired to stop Jesus altogether by killing him. Jesus knew that his time left on earth was nearing an end, so he gathered his disciples, whom he greatly loved, together for a meal. In the middle of the meal, Jesus stood up from the table, took off his outer clothing, and tied a towel around his waist. Then he poured some water into a bowl. He went to each of his disciples and washed their feet with the water in the bowl, wiping them dry with the towel around his waist. When Jesus came up to him, his disciple Peter said, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you do not realize now what I am doing but later you will understand. No, Peter said, you shall never wash my feet. At the time, washing someone's feet was a task that was given only to hired servants. But Jesus replied, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. So Peter said, then, Lord, not just my feet, but my hands and head as well. When Jesus finished washing his disciples' feet, he put his outer clothing back on, returned to the table, and asked his disciples, Do you understand what I have done for you? You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Later in the meal, Jesus reflected again on what he was trying to teach them. A new command I give you, Jesus said, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Our scripture reading for this first weekend of Lent is taken from the Gospel of Mark, the 10th chapter. Then James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to him. Teacher, they said, we want you to do something for us that we ask. What do you want me to do for you, Jesus said. They replied, let one of us sit at your right and the other on your left in your glory. You don't know what you're asking, Jesus said. Can you drink from the cup I drink from? or be baptized with the baptism I am baptized with? We can, they said. Jesus said to them, you will drink the cup I drink and be baptized with the baptism I am baptized with. But to sit on my right or my left is not for me to grant. These places belong to those for whom they have been prepared. Then the 10 heard about this, they became indignant with James and John. Jesus called them together and said, You know that those you regard as rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wants to be first must be the slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom for many. Here ends our scripture gospel lesson. We now make our confession of faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence you will come to judge the living and the dead. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. 
Grace, mercy, and peace be from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. As we are entering this season of Lent, we're going to be talking about humility this day. And humility reminds me of this football player. Most of you don't know who he is. He played for the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, but he was the quarterback, Roger Staubach. And even though Roger considered his coach, Coach Landry, to have a genius mind when it came to football, strategy, pride came to him in such a way that he thought he should be running the team. And so Roger Staubach had to make a decision. Would he follow what the coach says in calling or would he follow his own ideas? And who would he listen to? And he had to learn humility, humility that the coach knew more than him. And Staubach went on to say, I faced up to the issue of obedience. Once I learned to obey, there was harmony, fulfillment, and victory. He had to humble himself under a great coach. And that's what God is asking of you, to humble yourself under the great coach named Jesus Christ. And what Jesus wants to build in us is humility. And that leads to our key question for today. What does it mean to value others before myself? And the key idea I want you to understand is this. With Jesus' help, I choose to esteem others above myself. And that kind of leads to our key verse for today. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves. Not looking to your own interests, but to each one of you, to the interests of others. And so we have this coach who comes to us and says, you know what, you're pretty smart, you're pretty great, but God can do something even greater as he works in us living a humble life. So what is this thing called biblical humility? Uh, the Bible describes humility as meekness or lowliness and the absence of self. The Greek word humility means lowliness of mind. You think of others before yourself. And where's the last time you heard that idea? Probably been a long time. But this is one of the key cornerstones of the Christian faith, having a humble heart. Another author said, humility changes how we view ourselves. When we are humble, our goal is not to exalt ourselves, especially over other people. And so just as that quarterback had to learn humility, so God wants to teach us humility. Reminds me of the story a guy named uh, Dawson uh, Trotman. He was the founder of a group called The Navigators. And one day he was visiting uh, Taiwan on an overseas trip. And during the visit, he and a Taiwanese pastor went to a mountain village to some national Christians. And the trail on the road was very, very wet and their shoes became muddy. Later on, someone asked that Taiwanese pastor what he remembered about uh, Dawson Trotman, this pastor. And he said this without hesitation. He replied, he cleaned my shoes. Here he is, this world famous pastor. And when he's done on this trip, he is washing the shoes of the man that he is with. How could he do that? because he had learned humility by sitting at the foot of Jesus. This Jesus who also washes feet, as we saw in the little video for today. And so humility is learning to care for others more than you care for yourselves. And it's easy to talk about humility, but it's tough to put into action. In our gospel lesson, we learned that James and John came to Jesus, that Jesus uh, can you ask, we ask you, can you do something for us? And Jesus says, what? And we read, can we sit at your right and your left? And Jesus began to talk about suffering and putting other people first. And James and John said, we can do that. We can drink from this cup. We can be baptized with the baptism that you are going through. And after this conversation, the other disciples heard that James and John wanted to be first among the disciples. And they became indignant. And so it is with us. We talk about humility, but it is so hard to live it out. You see, we live in a world where we are taught it's all about me, me, me. And that's what the disciples got caught up in. It's not about you, it's about me. I want to be number one. 
And so what did Jesus do? He says, you know that those regard as rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their high officials exercise authority over them. And listen to what Jesus says, not so with you. Not so with you, disciples. And Jesus tells us the same thing, not so with us. Whoever wants to be great must be your servant. Who wants to be first must be slave of all. And so it's so easy for us to get into the me, me, me attitude with our friends and our family and to try to climb that ladder and leave other people behind. But the Bible says in the book of Proverbs, when pride comes, then comes disgrace, but with humility comes wisdom. And uh, back when I was younger, there was a very, very famous uh, pastor, teacher named Francis Schaeffer. And he was world known. And he taught people about humility and love. But in his own church that he was a part of, he saw his church broken apart because of a lack of humility. And so he sat down with the pastor of his church and they began to study why did his church break apart? This place that should have been a place of love became a place of dissension. And they did this study and he found these ideas. And he wrote, there's a direct correlation that exists between people who are satisfied closely following Jesus in the church, who are friend makers and keepers, again, other centered, with the overall effective health of the church. There's also, in contrast, a direct correlation with those who are not satisfied in their church. These people, it's all about me, and who lack the ability to make no effort to make friends in the church setting. And Schaefer saw a church fall apart, torn apart, by people who were not humble, people who were not focused upon Jesus and other people. And he went on to talk about what that church should have been. It should have been a healthy church. And listen to what this very famous man wrote about what a healthy church is all about. Healthy church families carry out the presence of Christ, the receiving of love and the fruit of the Spirit in real practice. People who love other people and make them feel expected and accepted. Visitors are welcome from the moment they enter the church and are joyfully engaged by others who are glad that they are there. Others are listening, sharing laughter as well as tears. Leaders have real humility and are growing in Christ as they teach with authority and conviction. And so this whole concept of humility matters in our lives. If we come to church thinking about ourselves and not others, we could destroy this very thing that needs to be a part of our lives. And so in healthy churches, relationships matter. Love matters. Forgiveness matters. And so Jesus wanted his people to be people who are part of a, a healthy group of followers of Jesus. And that leads to our second point for today. And opposed to that idea is this idea of not being humble. And we need to understand that God opposes the proud and grants favor to the humble. Uh, Proverbs 3.33, he mocks the mockers, but shows favor to the humble and the oppressed. And so we, as we live our lives, need to understand that God is not about people who are proud of heart, that they will lose in the end. Again, Proverbs 29.33, pride brings a person low, but a lowness of spirit gains honor. And so the Bible is full of stories about what happens when people take a different direction, a direction where they lack humility. There's this amazing book of the Bible called the Book of Daniel. And a lot of you know this book. A story about a, a young man named Daniel brought to Babylon. And one of the stories involved Daniel with the king of Babylon, a king named Nebuchadnezzar. And Nebuchadnezzar was proud about what he had done. And then one night, Nebuchadnezzar had this dream that troubled him so much. Uh, part of the dream was about this large tree that was cut down and then uh, had this metal around it. And Nebuchadnezzar wondered, what does this dream mean? And so he brought in Daniel. And Daniel interpreted the dream along with others to the king. 
And Daniel said these words, Therefore, your majesty, be pleased to accept my advice. Renounce your sins by doing what is right and your wickedness by being kind to the oppressed, that it may, that it may be that your prosperity will continue. And so the king was told to humble himself, but he did not humble himself. And uh, a year later, he's, the Bible says, the king is walking on the roof of the royal palace of Babylon. And he said, is not this the great Babylon I built as a royal residence by my mighty power and the glory of my majesty? The king lacked humility and the king was humble. Immediately, what had been said about Nebuchadnezzar was fulfilled. He was driven away from people and ate grass like an ox. His body was drenched with dew of heaven until his hair grew like feathers of an eagle and his nails like the claws of a bird. God brought judgment upon King Nebuchadnezzar. And so it happens in this world. You will see people who will exalt themselves, but eventually God comes and brings them down. And this king had to learn humility. And eventually the king learned humility. He repented and was restored. The book of Daniel records these words from the king of Babylon. At the end of that time, I, Nebuchadnezzar, raised my eyes towards the heaven and my sanity was restored. Then I praised the Most High. I was honored and glorified him who lives forever. And so God has given us this concept of humility to humble ourselves and to live humble lives. Otherwise, we will be brought down. So life is not about me, me, me. Life is about other people. And that leads us to our last point for today. Allow the Holy Spirit to give you the mindset of Jesus. And Paul in the book of Philippians wrote these beautiful words. In your relationship with one another, have the same mindset of Jesus Christ, who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his human likeness or advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a, what's that next word? Servant. And being made in the appearance of a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death even death on the cross. And so we are in the first week of Lent. And during Lent, we are to pray and fast and help those in need. And we do this all by looking at Jesus. And as we look at Jesus, we look at the incarnation of how the eternal Son of God left his glory to take on human flesh, who being in the very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be advantaged. And Jesus' entire life was about humility. Instead of climbing up the ladder, he's climbing down the ladder. He's climbing down the organizational chart of the universe. And he comes to the very bottom, even lower than the angels. And he washes the feet of the disciples. He shares with them what life is all about, humbly serving the people around us. And so to grow in humility, we have to understand that this is our God and that Jesus' death was the most shameful death imaginable. He humbled himself, became obedient to death, even death on the cross. Uh, this one author I read, uh, Stephen Cole, said this, It would have been amazing enough for the eternal God to come to this earth as a mighty king. It was even more amazing that he became a humble servant. But it's almost beyond comprehension that he would go lower and die. And even more staggering, his death was not a noble death, but a horrible, ignoble death of a common criminal. And so next time you want to be prideful, you want to think about me, me, me at some thing that's happened in church or at work in your family, picture Jesus. This is our focus. This is how we are to live. We are to follow Jesus and give up our rights and sometimes even suffer for the sake of other people. Another author said, for the Jews, whoever is hung on a cross was accursed by God. For the Gentiles, death by crucifixion was the lowest, most despicable form of death imaginable. Roman citizens were exempt from crucifixion. The Roman poet Cyril said, 
Far be it the very name of the cross, not only from my body, but even from my thoughts, eyes and ears of a Roman citizen. But this is what our God did for us, the humility of our God. And so to grow in humility, we are to allow the truth of Christ's incarnation of death to affect the way we act towards other people. In our day, humility is hardly ever emphasized. In fact, we always talk about self-love. But Augustine, the great theologian of the early church, said in the Christian faith, the first, second, and third most important things is always humility. So what are you gonna do with today's sermon? I pray that you will look to Jesus and understand that true humility means renouncing self for the sake of others. That true humility means lowering myself to lift up others. True humility yields any rights for the sake of serving others. It's not about us. It is about Jesus and about serving others. So what does it mean to value others before self? With Jesus' help, I choose to esteem others above myself. And that is your spiritual practice for this week. Or as C.S. Lewis said, true humility is not thinking less of yourself. It is thinking of yourself less. And that's what Jesus did for us. He put us first because he loves us so much. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We encourage you now to stand for this time of prayer. Lord God, in this world that talks so much about loving ourselves, help us to understand how much you love us and that we are to give our lives in caring for others. Help us to live humble servant lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray once again for peace in this world of war. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for the sick and the grieving and those who are really struggling with life this day. Let them know that a humble Savior was born for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Be with families around this world and help them to grow in love and care for one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And Jesus, as we walk this season of Lent, Help us to keep our eyes focused upon the cross, your example of how we are to live. We ask this in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Once again, I want to thank all of you who support the work here at Mount Calvary Lutheran Church. Uh, it was nice right before we filmed this, a uh, person from our local school district came down and gave us a thank you note. Uh, every month for the past almost two years now, we give little thank you gifts to all the people at Rim High and the staff members who are there. And so again, your work helps us to bring the light of Christ here into our world. If you can't make it to a Lenten worship service, we have one here every Wednesday night at 6.15 or on Zoom at 4 o'clock. You can join me for a Lenten Bible study. Well, it's now time to receive God's blessings as we go out into the world. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.